He was very uh, charming. He was uh, very much, he would send flowers and gifts, and he was just someone that he took, you know, I guess he caught my eye or swept me off my feet or however you want to say that. But he was like that in the beginning. It was not long, about three months, before I noticed that this was all just, it was starting to get, you know, to where he was wanting other things and very controlling, trying to keep me away from, you know, my family. It would just have to be him and him alone that I needed to see. We probably dated for maybe four or five months, and then after that, the rest of the time we were together was trying to get rid of him, actually. So he just kept coming around. He would drive by my house. He would call me and text me in my work, emails. I mean, there were tons of emails. He didn't get the, the message that I wanted him to leave me alone. He was pounding on my bedroom window. And I mean, it was the scariest, one of the scariest things he'd ever did. It, his face was right there when I woke up, you know. And of course, my daughter was in the house as well. And he just kept on pounding and yelling. And I was like, go away. I can't let you, I'm not going to let you in. Well, he was saying things like, you better, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. He said to me, we can't do anything unless he physically hurts you. It was like, okay, he hasn't physically hurt me yet, but emotionally he's terrorizing me. He was texting me the whole time I was there, and I was showing her so that, you know, of course someone else could see. And she just couldn't believe it. I mean, the things he was saying is like crazy. One minute it would be, I love you. The next minute it would be, I'm going to kill you. I know you're with your boyfriend and blah, 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 just crazy stuff. I left her house and I went home and it was probably about 1130. And my daughter's curfew is like 12 or 1230. I heard a large knock at the front door, so I thought it was my daughter, who um, I thought maybe she had, for I thought Megan had forgotten her key. And as I came out in the hallway, the noise went to the back door. And I heard the back door, Michael broke the back door down. And then before he came through the other door, I was getting ready to run across the street. And then he broke the other door down. So as I ran out the front door, ran across the street, I, those people, I, like, I just opened their door basically and busted my way in there. My goal was to get away and um, hopefully the neighbors would shut the door and he didn't get in. I hid in their hallway um, thinking that I could get away from him, I guess. I did not know he had a weapon until I saw him holding it to my neighbor's head. He did say he was going to shoot my neighbor. So I guess that after that, then I, I went, just take me and, and leave them alone. When we got back across the street, then he told me to get into my car and I told him no. I said that my daughter was gonna come home and that I couldn't get into the car. He was just in a dead stare and he kept pointing the gun at my head and telling me to get into the car. And I said, Michael, I said, what is wrong with you? Um, and like, like he would not, he just wouldn't tell me anything. He wouldn't say anything to me except to get into the car. He's gonna shoot me. So I started to walk towards my house to see if I could get in, you know, maybe get away from him. And then he shot me in the leg. So I got into my car, we backed out of the driveway, and I threw the car in park then, and then as we went up the hill, I threw it in park again, and then he 
you know, pointed the gun at me and said, you know, if you do that again, I'm going to shoot you in the head. I thought to myself, well, I'm going to die anyway, but I'm not going to die without a fight. And he sped up and went really fast because we were almost to 40 highway. And I, he was probably going at a rate of maybe 70 or 80 miles an hour. I knew in my mind it started thinking, you know, we're getting close to 40 highway. You know, where is he taking me? Uh, What's he going to do? How's he going to do it? All those things that we're thinking. So I was like, the only, my only choice was to open the door and jump. I remember him stepping on the gas and thinking to myself, this is your last chance, basically. I just opened the door, and at some point, he hit me because I, I had a black eye when I woke up, and I don't remember being hit, but at some point he did. Um, and I opened the door, and I uh, just basically rolled out. When I jumped, it felt like if I'm going to die this way, I would much rather die this way than to have go, you know, go with him. I, I didn't, I wasn't going to die with him. I had been drugged down the road a few, about probably maybe a half a block. But when I was able to get up on my feet, it was like tunnel vision because Michael had hit me in the eye with the gun. I saw this fence of this house and I just ran for the fence and it seemed like it was so far away. And I just remember running as fast as I could run. And when I got to the fence, I just actually not jumped, but fell over that fence. I busted their door open with my arm and um, the whole glass door. I could have just opened it, but at that time, you're not really thinking. You know, you're thinking, I need to get in. And after I got inside of the lady's porch, I knocked on the door and asked her to let me in. I was screaming, and she said to me, I can't let you in because I don't know you. I heard the car crash, and it, it, of course, it was close. So I... Um, then assumed that Michael would get out of that car and come and get me, uh, or come and get my daughter, Megan. So either way, I, I wanted you know to get to the police right away. I kept yelling to the police that he's coming, he's right there. So I don't know how he got away, because they had the lights and the helicopters and everything out there looking for him, and somehow he got away. Then they took me to the hospital, and. Um, that's when we found out that I was shot twice because they, I didn't know. And as I went through the hallways, I mean, I was, I don't even know how to describe how scared I was. It was like being in this, I was just, we went by the door and I was so scared. I told them, don't take me by the door because I thought, you know, he was going to shoot me or he'd be there by the door. So they did emergency surgery and uh, had me under an assumed name in the hospital locked down the whole time. And they actually didn't find Michael for three, four, five days. They had talked to him for probably 11 hours, I think, or something like that. And finally, um, he said he was gonna come out, is what they said, and uh, before he came out, he shot himself. So um, that's how it ended. I survived because I kept my emotions um, under control and I thought a lot about what was important to me, why I wanted to live. And um, I, I don't, I guess those are the main things. But I think that all women need to be um, so aware that if it's too good to be true, it usually is. Because, um, you know, he was just too good to be true. It was like someone who gave you, he just showered me with this and that. And then at the end, he showered me with nothing but, you know, terror. And I'm still here. So I feel like I've, I've, uh, I am a survivor and I did, you know, what I thought was best to do in that situation. <laughs>